Hi, everyone. Hi, welcome to our Simple Good Youth Art Showcase. So great to have you guys. My name is Priya Shah, and I'm the founder and executive director of the Simple Good. Um, I just wanted to briefly introduce myself and the mission of the Simple Good, and then get started with our amazing showcase that we have here today with our ASM students that will be sharing their meaning with Simple Good with you and through their artwork. Um, so for those of you that don't know, our mission is to connect the meaning of good from around the world to empower youth to become positive activists through art and discussion. We provide mindfulness and social emotional learning based arts residency programs to really transcend the message that no matter where you go in the world, good means the same to all of us. And that is what connects us as human beings. So to give you guys a little preview of our work and hear about the simple good from our youth from across the city, we have a short video that we wanted to show. The idea of this program, Simple Good, has kind of allowed me to see Simple Good in other people as well because I usually focus on myself. So since this is a community based look for the positivity community. Pause and start over again. Mm -hmm. Talking to people, I started looking, looking at stuff different, like yeah, sunsets, and, uh, buildings, and you start to think more about others. Well, for me, at least, when I we went out and we start talking to people, I started looking at stuff different, like sunsets and the buildings and the people around me. So I'm looking at them different. Idea of this program, Simple Good, has kind of allowed me to see Simple Good in other people as well, because I usually focus on myself. So since this is more community-based, you look at the positivity in communities and groups of people. The Simple Good has impacted me by like, making me realize that the little things are the the good in life like i i can eat breakfast now and be like this is a simple good or i can help my mom cook and be like i'm doing a simple good so it makes me look at life more positively i guess it's made me see how a lot of people from all around the world have posted photos about the blog and it just makes me think like wow it's touched all these people and now it's touching me I think positivity is a thing we need in all of our communities, especially now with everything going on. Um, you know, just little things that people can do every day, saying hi, lending a hand here and there, you know, makes a big difference. I feel like the simple good is more about caring, helping others, um, going around different communities, for example, like the elderly and going to North Mondo to see students do graffiti art. My community in recent years has become one of the most negative communities in the city. And I feel like if something positive were to happen, it will be able to keep at least that one team, say one team's life or influence somebody, to, somebody else to do something good. Amazing, thank you. Well, I'm glad you guys got to hear a little bit about the Simple Goods from our students from across the city. Um, and before we get started with our showcase, I actually wanted to introduce all the amazing partners that have been involved in this program, which has been a really special experience. So first I wanted to introduce 826 Shy that has joined us for this ASM program for a unique collaboration. Um, so I'd like to invite Ka Kayla to speak on Eight two six shine. Yes, thank you. It's Kyla. You're right. Um, but <laughs> I'm here with eight two six shy, and as you see, it is a nonprofit creative writing and tutoring and publishing center, and it serves students from grades K through twelve. I'm actually an alumna of eight two six shy. I was in the teen writer studio when I was in high school. I'm now a senior in college at the University of Wisconsin Madison, and eight two six is a really great community that opened my eyes to the opportunities like for writing. It made me believe that my words were enough. It's a publishing center. And so 
a lot of the work that we do as students gets published at the end in a chapbook or a compendium. And so that is eight to six Chicago. They still have team writer studio for all of you high school students. And it's actually in schools now instead of at the center in Wicker Park. So I would look into eight to six shy. It's a great opportunity. And I enjoy working with you all throughout this program. Amazing, thank you, Kyla. Um, and then I wanna introduce our amazing program partner, After School Matters, who has made this program possible. So uh, I kind of wanna pick on our old friend, David, that's here with us today. Um, if you don't mind just sharing some few words about ASM. Hey, I was not expecting to speak, but it's all good. How are you, Priya? I miss you. Uh, looking forward to catching up one day soon. Uh, hi, everyone. After School Matters is the leading nonprofit here in Chicago, Illinois, um, within after school programming and summer programming. I am the professional development specialist for the organization, which means I support instructors in all of the training and support that they need to better serve teens across Chicago. And I'm so excited to be here with you all and hope you had an amazing summer. Amazing, thank you, David. Appreciate you letting me put you on the spot. Um, I appreciate it. Um, and last but not least, I'm so excited to introduce our amazing guest speaker, who is a Chicago artist and good friend of the Simple Good, Brandon Bro. So I'm gonna invite him to say a few words. Brandon, do you wanna say hi? <laughs> I'm muted. I'm sorry, I was muted. Uh, <laughs> good morning, everybody. Uh, still morning time. I had to check the calendar. I mean, uh, the clock. Um, good morning. My name is Brandon Bro. I'm, I'm an artist based in Chicago. Um, I'm, my a lot of my history is in fine arts, and I got into uh, web design and doing other things. And you know, I began to develop a multidisciplinary uh, artistry and art practice. Uh, Educated a lot in Chicago, was a part of the Gallery 37 um, group and the Gallery 37 education. And, and you know, that thing got me a lot of exposure. And I realized the importance of working in community and also having support as a young man uh, and a young artist growing. So I'm happy to be here uh, today with you all and then joining, joining in for the event today. Thank you for having me. Thanks for being here, Brandon. We're so excited to have you. So Brandon will be um, hearing everybody's artist statements and looking at your artwork and providing feedback at the end of each presentation. So we're very excited to hear what you think. Um, cool. So let's, uh, I would, I'm so excited to introduce our amazing teaching artist and also program coordinator and lead teaching artist for the Simple Good, Ali, who is our amazing instructor for this program. So she's gonna take it away. Hey y'all, thank you so much for being with us here today. Um, yeah, we're super, super excited. This summer has flown by. Every day we kick off programs saying, oh my gosh, I can't believe that today is X day. Um, but the students have been doing some really amazing work finding the simple good within their photography, within themselves and within their greater communities. So I'm really excited and proud of the work that they've been able to create this summer together in this virtual space. Um, and really looking forward to hearing what y'all have to think about it. Just a few housekeeping rules to make sure that we're maintaining a brave space. So one mic, we ask that you please stay muted while the artists are presenting, right? Uh, we want you to give them their flowers. So please use the chat feature to share feedback with the artist. Each one of the artist statements ends with a simple good question. So I encourage you to reflect on your answer, then share it out with the group. We want you to have an open heart and an open mind. So please use kind and respectful language and practice active listening. And last but not least, the simple good. Please continue to think about what the simple good means to you and share them out as we move through today's program. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop talking now and invite our first student to come on up, Aisha. Hello, my name is Aisha Adabisi. I'm 16, I'm in 10th grade, and I, I attend Rogers C. Sullivan High School. My simple word is hope because I look to the future and hope that I could get what I want and what I don't have now. My simple word was inspired by the many goals that I have not yet achieved and the many wounds that I have not yet been healed. I depicted my simple good in my photo by creating a perspective that shows trees that are up close and the sky that's far away. 
The trees represent the present and the very blue sky in the future. I created this perspective of looking up at the sky from a window. I made the trees bright and make the sky cool because I currently have a present that functions and I hope for a relaxed and refreshing future. The street lights represent our light comes and goes in my life. Some struggles as an artist that I can overcome using my sense of good are putting myself down and letting what people say affect my self esteem. I plan on using my meaning of the sense of good to improve my community and change the world by sharing a prayer message that people can get just by looking at my photo. I want to let people know that hope as small as a grain of rice is still hope. You can beauty yourself up to never bring yourself down. This is important to me because I relate to it on a personal level. I've brought myself down so many times that at some point I got used to it. I didn't appreciate myself and I gave up too quickly. But now I want to stop engaging in such habits for us to live a better and more enjoyable life. I'm taking new steps and even though there are still people trying to bring me down, I now have a support from other friends and family members. With their help, I believe I'll be able to achieve my goals and think of life in a more positive aspect. Thank you. A typical question I would ask others is, what sense did you take when you had even the closest people in your life try to bring you down? Thank you, Aisha. Let's give it up for Aisha, y'all. I encourage you to go ahead and answer her question in the chat. Um, what steps did you take when you had even the closest people in your life try to bring you down? And Brandon, I'll pass the mic to you. Hey, Aisha. Um, so, Ali, do you want me to answer the question, Aisha posed? Whatever yeah. moves you, Brandon, through her work. Okay. Yeah. Um, so what I what I'll say to that is uh, really perseverance and um, finding or grounding in your life through whatever practice that might be. Uh, it may be long walks. It may be um, some form of meditation, uh, some form of a, a going inward and um, really self reflection and being present. I uh, also would say that. Um, you know, I think that's a, a thing that a lot of us experience in, in our lives sometimes in our, in our household or around us, like, you know, uh, when there's a persistent um, lack of, of, of hope or pressure in some of the environments in which we come from, we often get that. And uh, sometimes our loved ones even may do things that they don't even realize that they're, they're doing. Um, and I think finding the mind and, and like the space um, to understand that it's not you. And um, there's so many things at play in this world. And also finding leadership, finding people, finding spaces like the one you're in right now that um, support you, I think is really important. So I want to uh, really congratulate you and give you your flowers for <clears throat> being here and being present and sharing your work. Um, I think the work is beautiful. You know, I love the skyline, I love clouds you know that's a huge theme in my in my work i, I did um all the chance the rappers album covers so the clouds in the sky and this idea of this vast world has always been appealing to me in thinking about ourselves and in this universe and in this world so it, it makes me think about those things it makes me think about our place in this world and it, it um Whenever I see the sky, it's a reminder to dream. So I think you're great. I think the color palette you're working with is really great. You know, you have these cools in the sky and a lot of these warm colors uh, toward the bottom, toward the horizon, almost like you would see when you see a sunset. You know, you see like the cooler, cooler colors up top and the warm at the bottom at the horizon. So yeah, it's um, thank you for sharing your work, and I'm really looking forward to see how you grow and, and you develop uh, your practice. And hopefully, I get a chance to witness that. Thank you. Amazing. Give it up for each cool. y'all. Oh, sorry. Yay. Yep, everybody really does. The colors is definitely a theme that people are uh, celebrating in the chat. Um, great job, Aisha. Thank you. All right, next up, we invite Joelle. Um, 
Hello, my name is Joelle Lamar. I am 18 years old and upcoming first year student in college and will be attending the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. My simple good is my best friend's smile because it got me through tough times during our last year of high school. My simple good was inspired by her beautiful smile that brightened my world. No matter how down I was feeling each day, her smile truly brought light into my dark days. I saw the love and comfort she held in that smile of hers. We both were going through tough times, but she never failed to also put a smile on my face. I depicted my simple good in my photo because I always tell Natalie her smile makes many flowers grow. I wanted to capture flowers blooming to express how powerful her smile was. When flowers bloom, they become a part of life. And when she smiles, she gave me hope for the life we live. I plan on using the meaning of simple good to improve my community and change the world by smiling more often and giving people hope when they most need it. I want to be like my best friend and provide people with comfort through my smile. This is important to me because I never want to take our friendship for granted and appreciate the love I receive daily from her. I don't ever want to forget how loved and supported I am by the people around me. Thank you. A simple good question I would ask others is, how, who is your sunshine during the hardest times in your life? Beautiful, great job, Joelle. Thank you, thank you. Joelle was able to create a beautiful portfolio of flowers all inspired by her friend Ma. And if she's not on the call, we will definitely have to share this recording with her. Thanks, Joelle. All right, Brandon, go ahead, your thoughts. I love the sentiment of the piece. Um, and I really love, you know, you taking this time to show some gratitude toward toward your friend. Gratitude is like a, a huge part of my um, practice as well. And I think it's really important to do that because we're often inspired by people um, around us. And then when, also when we kind of take time and express with other people or share things with other people, it gives us a sense of fulfillment and a sense of joy. Um, to see people receive those things. So I think, you know, you, you're starting at a point really early, um, really expressing gratitude. And that shifts people, um, that can change people's perspective and let people know that they're appreciated. So I thank you for sharing that smile. Um, your friend's smile, you know, sharing your own with us and for the work that you are doing. Love plants, I love flowers. You know, I think um, a lot of people in my life also appreciate that, appreciate those aspects of nature. So we try to keep those around as much as possible. So they're like a lot of elements. And then the contrast between the back, the gate in the back and the flowers in the front is really cool. Like you're playing with these two two different themes, like in this in this sort of this man-made world that we live in, you know, nature is still pervasive and nature still exists and and won't let you forget about how beautiful it is. So thank you. Hey, great job. Give it up for Joelle. All right. Next up, we invite Joseph. Greetings. My name is Joseph Garcia. I am 17 years old in the 12th grade, and I attend school at Steinmetz College Prep. My simple good is for people to always strive to become the best and to always feel like they can move freely in life because everybody deserves a chance at freedom without having to deal with bumps and tall barriers. Just like the wind, even though an object can stop the flow of the breeze, that breeze will always continue its flow. People should never feel restricted to be who they are and they should never feel restricted to become an overachiever with their set goals. My simple good was inspired by the buildings and wind in Chicago because buildings always stand tall and touch the sky the same way as an individual who stands tall to touch their goals in life. I depicted my simple good in my photo by taking a slanted picture of Chicago's buildings as a representation of them standing tall and touching the beautiful blue sky. The title created in my piece defines how everyone should be able to move freely without being categorized in a certain area based on the color of their skin or their ethnic background. That title is called Be the Windy City, Move Freely. Everyone should have a chance to move freely in life in a windy motion. There will be some struggles and bumps along the way, but just like the breeze of the wind, it will, still, it will still keep on going no matter what. Some struggles as an artist that I can overcome using my simple good are always having an open and growth mindset when it comes to visualizing things in your own perspective. Everyone's perspective is different and everyone is entitled to their own opinion on what they are viewing. 
when it comes to photography, it is always best to have a simple conscience on what the artist is trying to communicate through either their painting, drawing, or photo. I plan on using my meaning of the simple good to improve my community and change the world by communicating positivity through photography and using Chicago's architecture to be a comparison on how us human beings are in life. This is important to me because not many people have the opportunity to understand what success is or what the meaning of simple freedom is based on the things that they have happened in their own life. Everyone should be granted the opportunity to feel and understand what success is and to move freely like the wind. Everybody should stand tall like a building to be an overachiever with their goals. And everybody should not be segregated, but instead move freely like the wind throughout Chicago. Be the windy city, move freely. Thank you. And a simple good question I would ask others is, how can you communicate or inspire positive change through the lens of your camera? Joseph has bars, y'all. Be the windy city, move freely. Yes, thank you. Brandon, go ahead, take it over with your thoughts, questions. Yeah, to your question, um, I think photography is a really powerful, uh, a powerful tool to be able to express the truths in the world um, from various perspectives, uh, you know? So I think I've seen photography used in, in many ways or employed or empowered in many ways to, to reveal um, certain things, to express emotion um, and get people to connect with one another in, in deeper ways through the expression of that like emotion and capturing that emotion. So I like that you, you know, you posed that question at the end. Um, I wanted to tell you, as far as the piece, I wanted to say, I like how you pushing that perspective. I mean, you spoke a little bit about perspective and having a different perspective and you, you know, you uh, tilted the image. So it kind of made the viewer look at the city a little bit differently at an angle. Um, you're creating these, like these, these lines with the clouds and uh, and the horizon and the skyline and, and nature at the bottom, you know, I, I like what you're, what you're doing and you're including this graphic design as a way to accentuate it looks like the photo or bring the photo to life outside of the frame. So yeah, I, I think that, you know, what you're doing, what you're doing here is pushing yourself and challenging yourself to go beyond the borders, you know, and go beyond um, what's what's just there and what you might run into. And I wanna encourage you to continue to challenge things, con continue to question um, and continue to look how you can contribute to accentuate the beauty that exists in our world. And also, you know, leave a statement that is uplifting uh, and empowering to people. So thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Great job, Joseph. Give it up for Joseph. All right, next we invite Heza. Um, hello, my name is Heza. I'm 16 years old and an upcoming junior at Mather High School. And my simple good is the beauty and having time to yourself. Time is valuable and often taken for granted. And having time to yourself lets you unwind and rest. And it also gives you the opportunity to create art or work towards a goal you have, or even spend time with loved ones. My simple good was inspired by getting a job. My hours are really long. I only have three days off a week. So these past couple of months, I felt like my life has become crowded. And I really grew to love the time that I had on my days off. I used to take it for granted, and now I use it to do everything I can't do while I'm at work and to make sure I'm spending time with my loved ones. I depicted my simple good in my photo by adding flowers and greenery around the clock to represent the beauty in time. And I also had a hearts in the lighting to show how much I love time. Some struggles as an artist that I overcame using my simple goods were, were um, using the time that I have to get more in tune with myself and to really think about what message I want to send as an artist and why I do art. It can also give me time to actually create art and to work on my skills as an artist. I plan on using my meaning of the simple good to improve my community and change the world by inspiring others to really use the time that they have wisely. I want them to recognize the importance of time and the opportunities they have to grow as an individual or to spend time with friends and family in their free time. 
This is important to me because I feel like I always take my time for granted. I still do, and I want to start using my time to both work on myself and to also cherish my loved ones while I still can. For example, my sister's already in college, so I only get to see her during breaks, and I didn't realize I was losing time with her until she actually left. Um, a simple good question I would ask others is, what do you wish you had more time for? Yeah, this is a question that I we that started a very long conversation in class, this idea of what do you wish you had more time for? Um, so we'd love to hear in the chat people's answers. And Brandon, go ahead. Thank you, Heza. Um, this is a great piece. I like, well, one of the things I'm first, you know, recognize about it is the, the handwork, like the drawing and how you're like incorporating that all over the image. But then also next to me is the motion, like the circular motion. And I think that's really great because it really lends itself to this idea of, of time and something that is moving, right? Like, like life is, is moving, whether we realize it or we want to or not, like time is doing its thing. Uh, so I think it conveys what you're saying really well. Um, you know, and I think the sentiment of it is really, is really great. You know, it, sometimes it takes us to not have a thing for us to realize the value of it in our lives or not have the, the ability to do thing, do something to realize what it, what it's like, um, to, to not have that thing or not have that time with that person. And that's just a part of life and things we do as we, we grow and we hope to like learn those lessons and keep them close and operate from them in, in the best ways we can, I feel. Um, so yeah, like I relate a lot to, to what you're, you're saying here and time for self is really important, especially in the world we live in. It can be so fast paced There's phones, there's all of these things that can be very distracting. Uh, you know, I say to everybody in the room, just make sure you make time for yourself for self-reflection and a little bit of pause from, from the noise and pause from the other things as well. Um, you might be a little bit more present for it, a little bit more aware and enjoying your actual time in your life more because of it. Uh, I wanted to ask you about the, the hearts. I see the hearts in like light around the clock. What do the hearts mean for you? And then what are the, like, why did you put them there? And why did you make them light instead of one of the drawing textures? Um, it was more of an aesthetic thing. Like I tried making the hearts. Um, at first they were going to be like solid colors, but it didn't look as nice. And I thought it was a nice little touch if it would blend in with the lighting. Yeah, I like how you did that. You chose that um, to make it light because it also adds a lot more depth in the piece overall. Um, also good use of color, you know, color contrast, the green and the red, you know, it, it adds um, some energy and like some tension in between the two, but I think it's, uh, it's, it's really well done and well thought out. So yeah, thank you for, uh, for sharing your work with us today. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, has a good job, yay. All right, next up we invite Alex. Hello. Give me one second, please. All right. Uh, forgive any sound that you might hear. There are some workers working on the house next to us. But um, hello, my name is Alexandria and I am 15 years old. I am in the 10th grade and I currently attend South Shore International College Prep. My simple good is growth and I chose the simple good because over the summer I have been trying to grow as a person through making better habits and choices. The photo I submitted aids to this aids to this through symbolism. This particular road leads to at least one main street, which of course gets very busy and crowded. This isn't good for a person trying to turn down the street to get home, but since they must do so and finding a detour will only take them longer, they must grow as a driver to overcome this obstacle. The main street symbolizes people and things that will try to get you off your path and take you down the road to failure. At this point, one must either grow better to, and overcome or grow worse and give into peer pressure. My simple good will inspire others to take the leap of faith and try to better themselves. I did this over the summer on a whim and it has actually helped me better myself as an artist and as a person. I want others to feel like they can do this and not be worried about the thoughts of others. This is important to me because most of the time I wouldn't be this dedicated to become, 
to becoming a better version of myself. While I've always had someone say, keep going or you can do it, I've never felt this motivated until now. My simple good question to you is if asked, what would you use to symbolize persistence? Alex, so, so thankful that you are coming into this time in your life. Um, Brandon, curious to hear your answer to her question and any thoughts you have about her piece. We can't hear you. Hey, Alex, yeah, I was on mute. Alex, can you repeat the question one more time? If asked, what would you use to, if asked, what would you use to symbolize persistence? Thank you. Thanks for um, uh, repeating that. I mean, since the image is in front of me, you know, I think the first thing that comes to mind is just like the persistence of like, of nature, of like gravity, right? Like the, the, um, the wood chips or the, like the moss, so I can't think of what they call it, is, is uh, in, interfering with the man-made sidewalk, right? You, know, you can't tell gravity what to do uh, and you can't tell nature how, how not to prevail. So I think nature is a great example of persistence and how it shows up, how it like, it will literally lift concrete and it will literally grow around the fence if a fence is in its way and attach itself to the fence. You know, so I think um, using uh, nature and how, how we as, as people keep going and stay persistent. That's another thing I think that, that shows that like how no matter the obstacle, there are people out, out there that continue to go and continue to move. And I think looking to those folks for inspiration is really important and something that I've, I've tried to do. Uh, so in your, in your photo, that's what I see, you know, I, I, um, I see the persist persistence of, of, of nature, the persistence of physics, the persistence of moving forward and this idea of moving forward. And maybe that those pieces on the side are in the way sometimes are obstacles and you have to be persistent to get over the wood chips, get, get beyond this thing. You know, I think you allude to that a lot uh, in your image. May I ask, what school is this? Hirsch, if I'm, I think it's Hirsch. Yeah, this is like, this is the block I grew up on, basically. <laughs> so I feel a very, a connection to this image um, because I played in the park on the other side of this school and I went to day camp on the other side of the school and I walked this street a lot of times because this was the street that I took to get from my house uh, to my grandmother's, my, my apartment to my grandmother's uh, building. So it looks very familiar in that way. And um, when you talk about persistence, I think this, it brings me back to my personal experience of like, of walking this route to go to the bus, to go to art school downtown and walking this route at five in the morning to get to high school. Cause my high school was on 111th and Pulaski, but I, we were committed to doing this thing. So I, I, uh, I really connect with this image in a lot of ways in a lot of meaningful ways. And I really love the, the message that you're sharing. Um, I think that it's that energy and that thoughtfulness that keeps us moving forward. Um, and I, yeah, I just want to say great work with what you're up to if you plan on to take photography moving forward, however that might be and whatever that might look like for you. Thank you for sharing. Look at that, y'all. Amazing, beautiful. Thank you so much, Alex. Great job. All right, next up, we invite Jose. Hello, my name is Jose Jimenez. I'm 15 years old in 10th grade and I attend Sean Hancock College Prep. My simple good is growth because as both humans and plants can relate, we both have our good and bad days, but having a bad day doesn't mean that we should give up. It simply means we have to overcome that obstacle because at the end of the day, something good comes out of it. My simple good was inspired but what by what I've been through the past two years and what I have learned about nature. I depicted my simple good in my photo by showing my tomato plant and its two tomatoes. They aren't red yet because it still has to learn and grow for it to be able to produce a, a delicious tomato. Just like when we learn a new skill, we have to master it in order to be really good at it. The tools are there to show that plants need something to make them who they are. Without the shovel, it wouldn't be able to expand its roots throughout the dirt. 
just like without our parents, we wouldn't know how to grow in society. I plan on using my meaning of the simple good to improve my community and change the world by showing people that we are not alone and humans and plants have struggles. Everyone does. No one is perfect, but as long as we learn to be strong and overcome these obstacles life puts in our way, we will have so many good things at the end. This is important to me because I have to learn to grow and be ready for what life throws at me, but also use the resources that I have and use my voice in this world. Thank you. Uh, a simple good question I would ask others is, what's one obstacle you wish to overcome in life? Thank you, Jose, our resident gardener slash farmer, giving us all the tips throughout the program together. Um, Brandon, go ahead, share your thoughts and your answer to his question. Mm. Um, hmm. The question is interesting. What is one obstacle that you wish to overcome in life? Man, <laughs> that's so deep. Um, and it's deep to me because one, it, uh, I think it takes, sometimes it takes a lot to admit that uh, something is an obstacle for you or to be completely honest with yourself about, about that thing, right? Um, overcoming fears are huge. When I first think of obstacles, I think about that because that doesn't, that's in the mind, right? And if your mind is telling you something, and your body is telling you, you know, a different thing. Um, and you can literally be able to do something, but a fear can, can stop you from moving forward. So, you know, um, I would say maybe, maybe doubt, you know, like any type of doubt in any situation over my ability or in my faith is, is something that, you know, I want to be at, at any point able to, to overcome. Um, moving forward in this life. That's the, that's the one that's on top. That's the one I could think of. Um, it, it, you know, this again is this theme of pervasiveness, right? Like going forward despite what might be there, despite what might be in the way. A lot of times fear of failure um, is something that can stop us and kind of be an obstacle for us, but it really takes those trials and it takes those lessons in order for us to move through things. And one of the greatest like bits of advice I got is just like run toward failure, like run toward these opportunities to hone your craft because that's all they are. Uh, and not fearing fa failure is really important. And knowing that when you push and when you go beyond that obstacle, there's more for you to learn in that process that is gonna equip you with better tools to even be able to move forward. So when you, as you talk about these things, you know, I talk about that. That's a lesson uh, that we get and we get and we need reminders of, you know, we need we, we constantly need reminders and just surround ourselves with reminders of that. Um, so that's what, that's like where my head is going. I love the garden. I love my plants, I love plants. My grandfather was a sharecropper. Um, he fed a, he, his family through a garden that he grew in Michigan. He bought back food every summer, every year that they would put away for the winter um, and it, you know, he was growing the food for the family in the garden, you know, it's like priceless these days, right? Cause you don't know, we don't know where the fruit is coming from and the food is coming from right now. So the image reminds me of that, the importance of cultivating land uh, and also feeding ourselves and growing the things that we put in, inside of our body, setting intention when we lay seeds in the soil, right? Cause those things sprout, those things become real. Um, so those are the thoughts that I have around the, around the piece. My question for you, is this part of a larger series in the garden that you would like to do? Or what are your thoughts moving forward? I like the motion of the water coming in in this kind of like interrupted way. It feels like a dotted line almost, um, you know, but it speaks to motion as well. But yeah, I want to, is this part of a series that you're developing or something that you're growing? Uh, yeah, I have a bunch of plants, but I just wanted to focus on this one because I felt like, I don't know, I just felt like the to tomatoes could be well presented in this picture, but mm -hmm. I got a ton of things that are growing right now. I, I remember, uh, I love that. I love that. I remember realizing one day that tomatoes are first green and then they turn red and they kind of, they kind of blew my mind. So I like that you have the tomatoes in this stage. Are these are these uh, green tomatoes or are they 
like are, are they red tomatoes or like what do you plan on like when do you plan on you know doing with them uh honestly i don't know i think they're like roman tomatoes but I don't know. I don't know. something like that okay cool man yeah I, I i like the image and i like what you're doing i like the life you're bringing to it and the colors are are well um yeah. really vibrant and they do something to you when you when you look at it so thank you thank you yeah Great job. Give it up for Jose, y'all. All right, next up, we invite Seth to share your work with us. Uh, my name is Seth. I'm in, I'm 17 years old. I'm in 12th grade. I attend William Howard Taft High School. My symbol good is seeing beauty in plants and also others, because if you're able to see the beauty in plants, you'll be able to see the beauty in others to make their day better and make them feel more beautiful. My symbol good uh, was inspired by all the art pieces I've done of flowers and also all of the amazing pictures I've seen of flowers. I this uh, as I um, this depicted my simple good in my photo by showing a flower that isn't perfect and also isn't fully grown. I plan on using my meaning of my simple good to improve my community and change the world by showing what uh, that we need more plants in my neighborhood and also need more flowers in the world. This is important to me because I always told I'm always told to see the inner beauty in others rather than the like f uh, cover of the book. A simple good question I would ask others is what is the best way to add flowers to other communities? Great job, Seth. So what do you think, Brandon? What is the best way to add flowers to other communities? That's deep, Seth, because you know, I think the question is, uh, for me, becomes that like, when you say flowers, is that like, is that symbolic of other positive things, or like, you know, actual flowers? I think, um, yeah, like I think it can kind of go both ways, and it's very interesting to to think about it in that way. Uh, I think flowers are a form of appreciation, form of gratitude, form of thanks. We say that a lot in our language in social media and today in this culture, like give people their flowers, right? We don't necessarily mean show up with a bouquet. You know what I mean? We, we mean it's a figure of speech in a way, right? Um, we mean show up for them in a, in a meaningful way and let them know how much you appreciate them. Uh, so I do, I view flowers in, in the same way as a, a form of appreciation of, of gratitude and uh, giving somebody a, a beautiful arrangement is, is timeless, right? Um, I think other ways to do that is sometimes it's just showing up, you know, sometimes it's showing up painting the mural, sometimes it's showing up just being present. And, you know, for me, I didn't, I chose to, to um, live in Chatham. I chose to live in a community in which I grew up in because everyone left, you know, you know, and I think it's some, it's, it's important to be accessible when you go off in this world and you do other great things. It's important for my cousins to see me. It's important for people to, to be able to see me no matter what I end up doing in this world or if I become a billionaire, whatever the case is, you know, I think showing up and being present to people is really important. So sometimes it can be as simple as that, you know? We never know how much our presence uh, can be meaningful to people, especially the people we love. So I visit mom very frequently because it means a lot. You know, it means a lot to her. Um, and then also showing up in other communities and doing other work, you know, is bringing flowers, I would say. Also, you know, very literally starting garden clubs in different places or going to support different people's garden club, I, I think is, is great as well. I like the work that you do with flowers. I work with plants a lot as well. You just find it throughout a lot of the recent art that I, I've done. And it's just such an acknowledgement to nature for me and acknowledgement to like other types, other intelligences. A lot of times we value our own intelligence and our own human being consciousness uh, and forget about that there's plant life. There are all these other forms of life that just know things beyond what we would be able to understand, uh, can feel and receive things and respond to things in ways that we can't uh, and are deeply connected and beneath the soil in ways where eyes can't see. Uh, so when I think about plants, you know, I like to 
honor that intelligence, like that inform that life form, that form of intelligence. And I do that. I happen to do that by them showing up in my work. So, I, you know, I think I like a color palette here too. It's just the green and the white and like the yellow, the little hits of yellow. It's really well uh, balanced to me. Um, and yeah, I get this idea that you are in the garden or, or you are close um, to these plants. And yeah, I like, I, I, your focal point is, is not even in the, the plants or the flowers right in front, it's a little bit further back. So it's almost like you have these things in the forefront that's, that are a little out of focus, but then you have these, these uh, petals at the top around the middle that are in focus. So you like focusing past these things, it creates these things, it creates a good sense of uh, depth um, to let you know, you know, almost like a bug's life, you know, you up close and personal to, to these items. So yeah. I said items. No, you haven't close to these life forms, I should say. Thank you for sharing this. Uh, peace. Yeah. Great work. Great job, Seth. Give it up for Seth, y'all. Woohoo. Some amazing gardeners in this group for sure. Giving life. All right. Next up, we invite Mohammed. Hello, my name is Mohammed. I'm 17 years old in the 12th grade and attend Lane Tech High School. My simple goal is having fun in life and to find what makes you happy because I think people should surround themselves with the things that make them happy. My simple goal was inspired by when I went on a road trip with my friend and had fun the road trip. I depicted my simple gun in my photo by taking a picture of a moment I was happy. The picture was some, has some bright colors showing happiness. I also think that as people get older, there's fewer happiness in life. And this is shown by the arc of the bridge and how the colors get darker, the more it goes up. I also think this that people, as they get older, they're less happy. They have less time and have less freedom. They have more to worry about, like work, family, and money. Some struggles as an artist that I overcome using my simple goods are that I think I make my best art when I'm happy. Yeah, I like what I'm doing at that time. And I plan I plan on using my, my meaning of simple good to improve my community and change the world by, by helping everyone find what makes them happy in life. Also, I think happy people are better people. A happy community is a better community. A happy world is a better world. This is important to me because I think everyone should have joy in their life also. I think being happy is good for your health. Thank you. A simple good question I would like to ask others is what makes you happy? Yeah, Mohammed, I agree. I think being happy is good for your health. Um, and the million dollar question, what makes you happy, right? Which we can we can relate to our concepts of the simple good and what does that mean to us? Um, so Brandon, what makes you happy? I think what makes me happy is um, seeing loved ones, especially people I haven't seen in a while. Um, the work that I get to do, like the result um, and kind of seeing how it makes people feel, uh, makes me happy. Um, accomplishing things makes me happy. Um, yeah, just doing what I said I was gonna do, you know, and, and like getting it done and feeling fulfilled by that sense of completion makes me happy. Um, I think those are the things that are most immediate for me. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, I, I want to ask you a little bit about the, about the image. <clears throat> is it the sun, is the focus that you wanted to have in this image the sunset and like the colors in the sky. Muhammad, you still there? Okay, he's not ready for a question. <laughs> um, yes, um, I think I really like the colors, you know, that's what I was gonna say. I think sunsets for me, like really being able to see the sunset from a, a good vantage point. It's something that I find a lot of uh, enjoyment in and a lot of happiness in too. Um, 
I take a lot of photos of the sunset and it's in the clouds and the sky when the sun is setting. So I can relate to that and it being something that brings happiness and joy into somebody's life. Yeah, and that's all. Thank you. Amazing. Give it up for Muhammad, y'all, inspiring us all to go on a road trip. <laughs> Great job. All right, Shay, we invite you to come on down, Shay. Hi, my name is Shaynal Randolph and I am 17 years old. I am an upcoming 12th grader and I attend at Kenwood Academy High School. My simple goal is to be determined to work hard on something that is difficult to you and to never give up regardless of your situation. Because as we know it, life is hard. And as long as you work towards your goals, you can be stronger than life itself. My simple goal was inspired by my struggle as an artist. I struggle a lot with my confidence and my artistic abilities like singing, dancing, drawing, writing, and etc. But I don't want to let those things keep me from becoming greater than I was yesterday. In my opinion, artists are capable of translating their struggles into art and other forms of art, making them interesting to look at. So I dedicate myself to work just as hard as my, um, as my artists. I dedicate, uh, I depicted my simple good in my photo, photo by taking a picture of me struggling to do a split. Even though I've lost my splits a couple of years ago, I am working towards the progress of getting my splits back. I plan on using my simple good um, in my photography by showing the realistic progress of how an artist do, do their work and the length it takes to get there. In my opinion, because of social media, it makes it impossible to see a realistic progress of an artist and how many times it takes for someone to get back up, which can make someone feel discouraged. This is important to me because everyone, everyone in my opinion, including me, are not perfect and people tend to make mistakes and struggle. But with vulnerability and discipline, you can become greater than what you were yesterday. Um, with my simple good question, I have to ask is, what is your obstacle in life and how do you attack them? Thank you. Amazing, Shay. Thank you so much for these words of motivation and encouragement. Um, Brandon, curious what it brings up for you. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Shay. Thanks for sharing. Uh, I like the, the sentiment about um, just documenting the process. I think that's really important. And you're right, we live in a world that shows a lot of results and kind of paints this life. You know, I'm speaking of social media um, specifically, it primes us to feel like we have to have this perfectly curated life or, or experience, right? And a lot of times it's not exactly how things go. Um, you know, we can do that now because of social media. Um, but it, I think you're right in kind of showing that other part of the process and how it took everyone to go through something to get to where they are, especially if they're in a place where a lot of people are appreciating it and uplifting the work that they do. So uh, I like this idea of documenting an artist's uh, process or creative's process um, to be able to display what really goes into creating that thing that you finally see on the stage and you finally hear on the radio. I just did a residency in Washington, D.C. at the uh, the Kennedy Center. It's the a, a arts uh, performance space that's dedicated to um, John F. Kennedy, the former president, right? And um, the, uh, the residency is all built around this idea of supporting artists in process to create the thing. So I think you're really on the right track when, like, when you know, focus on the, focusing on that. I think a lot of people really want to see that. They want to see what people go through because they themselves have things that they might be going through and being able to see that is very encouraging and inspiring for a lot of people. So thanks for just the sentiment that you have and like the direction it looks like you're heading uh, with your work. Are you planning to make this a, another series or continue this work in some form? Um, I'm planning to. Um, because I'm a dancer, I really want to make sure that I continue to work because dancing takes a lot of skill and dedication. So I'm mm -hmm. planning to make this a series. Yeah, I think that's great. I can already see it, you know, um, and it's great documentation for you and, and your life uh, and for people to really be able to understand your story and your journey. So please do continue. That's going to be a great series and project on the, on the end of it. 
thank you for sharing. Thank you. You're welcome. Great job, Shave. Get up for Shay, y'all. Um, all right, next, we want to invite Princess Sheriff. I know earlier when we were doing a mic check, um, we were having a few mic issues. So I want to give it a minute. Princess Sheriff, is it working now? Yeah. Yay! Oh, I'm so excited. All right, take it away, Princess. Uh, hello. Um, hi, my name is Princess Sheriff. I'm 17 years old. I attend Hansberry College Prep. Um, hello. And my simple clue is um, we live to the, um, my simple clue is that we live in a black and white world today. Also, I chose this because um, we feel like we can be ourselves in the world. And my simple goal is inspired by this because most of all things that because the world is black and white, we can we can change it. And my simple, I did get my simple goal in my photo by saying that we sh we shouldn't be afraid to ask for help for, for each other. And we don't know what the other person is going through. And asking for help doesn't make you weak. I plan on using my my uh, using my meaning of the simple goal to improve my community and change the world by inspiring others that they can that they are not alone also to speak their voice or they can use the ad in different way to express how they feel. And one question I would like to ask is um this is important to me because today we don't think that we can do anything that we want if um like when we come to like if we wish to get something and then it's time for all to get it. We're like, we're afraid to try. And my question, my simple good question is that, why are you afraid to uh, try your things? Thank you, princess. I'm so glad you're able to share that with us. Okay, Brandon, why are you afraid to try new things? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, princess. Thank you for the question. Well, I think I do a pretty good job at not being afraid to try new things. But, you know, sometimes like, you know, I was, I was in Mexico a couple months back and I jumped off of a cliff uh, and, and at a cenote. And cenote is like an underground cave that you can kind of you can swim through. That's like in Mexico, there are these channels of water that, that run on the, on the ground. Um, and they are like, they're caves. So there are bats. There are like all of these things down there, right? So, you know, they're bats. I don't know what bats do when you come through they, their house. So, of course, you know, I think we naturally have some fears associated it and swimming under the cave you know bats were flying over our head swimming under the cave and going to the other side we then climbed up and jumped off the edge and I felt fear and I experienced fear right but I did it anyway because I trusted myself you know so um I think uh, you know I, I get afraid of trying new things because I don't know exactly what might happen right <laughs> like <laughs> when you don't know exactly the course of action and things like what the experience would be, you've never done it before, you know, you can get a little fear, fearful, but I think the thing is tr like trust in self and then also good assessment of the situation. Like, is this safe? Is this not? If I have, you know, if my ankle is already bothering me or my shoulders already bother me, maybe I shouldn't jump in this deep water, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because it might impact me getting out of the water. So, you know, um, I, think, I think it could be a source of different things, but where you are in a moment, you know, a lot of it depends on where you are in that moment. Uh, and I would say it's important also to trust self and reach beyond that because you never know. You never know what's on the other side of that thing um, that you shied away from, right? When, when in actuality, in that situation, there may have been no harm that was immediately presenting you on the other side of that thing. So that's what I would say to it. That's what I would say to it. Thank you for that question because it challenged me to really think about, I don't think of myself as a person that's afraid of trying new things, but I experience fear just like anybody else. And that's okay, right? That's a part of life. But it's how you respond to fear that really matters in the face of fear. 
It's how you respond to these things. So I wanted to say that to your piece. I like it. I like that you did too. You know, I like that you did this. And it's not like they're laid directly on top of each other, right? There's like this, it feels like this distance in between the two things, right? And, it, and I, I, I consider uh, each photo like objects, like two different objects or two different pieces that are now one because of how you presented them, right? So I think this is uh, it's interesting and different from the other pieces that we've seen so far. This feels very uh, conceptual in a way. And um, yeah, like I hope you keep keep going with these these juxtapositions of these um, these images in some way and, and build a series on it because it could be interesting to see like a wall full of these works like these. Um, that's all on the end there. Thank you. Great job. Give it up for Princess, y'all, causing us all to reflect. <laughs> all right. Next up, we want to invite David. Uh, hi, sorry. All right, uh, so hello, my name is David. I'm 15 years old and I'm a common junior in Kenwood High School. My simple goal is peace because I believe in uh, peace and keeping teams in order. Uh, my simple goal was inspired by the simple blog website. I depicted my simple good in this photo by making the sky look peaceful and calm at the same time. I plan to use my name of the simple good to improve my community by changing uh, people's perspective on on what the what peace means to them and sharing positivity. Uh, this is important to me because I believe in peace and taking big breaths. And thank you. My question is, do you ever feel at peace in different places? Great job. Thank you, David. Really showing your, your amazing editing skills with this piece. Um, Brandon, thoughts, feelings? Yeah, and to your question, you know, yeah, I think uh, I have felt peace in some different situations. This one time I was in Japan and I lost my wallet, like I, I didn't have any money for the next five days because I left my bank card in a whole nother city and it got lost, right? Um, and in that moment, I couldn't do anything but let go. And I felt like in an unexplainable sense of peace in that moment. So I think depending where we are in different situations, um, we, we can experience peace in, at times and in moments where People don't, oh, we may not feel like we should, or like maybe seem like not the right time. And my advice is like, is to lean in to, to that experience um, because it's, it's helping us develop our ability um, to redefine how we have seen what's in front of us or how we think we're supposed to see what's in front of us, right? Um, yeah, so I think, I've, I, yeah, I've, I've Found peace in a lot of like different places in this lifetime. Uh, to your piece, I, I love the dreamlike quality of it. Um, and you know what you did with, I guess, I guess you use a, a blur, like a ripple to, a tool. Uh, yeah, I like uh, what, you, what you're doing. It feels very surreal, very dreamlike, and um, you know, full of like wonder and, and questions. Like, are those clouds moving in toward one another? Um, you know, and what's on the other side, it almost looks like fire in the sky. And sometimes the clouds can look like fire in the sky, right? So it just, uh, it's very cool. And then the colors are like really great too, like this this purple and this orange, with that, which they're almost like complementary colors, you know, but not quite, but they just look great with one another, right? This tone of like purple and this tone of orange just look great together. So I think, um, the sky and nature often provides us like paintings and things that don't look real, that look surreal in and of themselves and also can form and provide their own forms of peace uh, that we can witness in this lifetime. And it's just it's such an amazing thing to be able to have the ability to do so. So thank you for your, for what you, your piece and what you presented and what you had to say. Um, I really like the image. Thanks. 
Thank you. Good job. Thank you, David. Get up for David, y'all. All right, and next up, we invite Mia to share out your work. Okay. Um, hello, my name is Mia Nicole Yepes. I am 15 years old and I'm in 11th grade and I attend to George Washington High School. My simple good is to never give up because if I want to be successful, I have to keep walking forward. Yes, I might fall behind or fail, but I cannot let that get to me because everyone has something good about them. My simple good was inspired by a tree. A tree goes through a lot like winter, wind, etc., and they still stay standing tall and shine and still growing. I just pick my simple good in, in my, my photo by taking a picture of a green tree. I plan on using my meaning of a simple good to improve my community and change the world by telling them to never give up on your dreams. Life is not easy, so we have to keep, keep shining and stay green. Always stay positive. We always grow. If we make mistakes, so what? We can learn from them. Do not fear failure, but rather fear, fear not trying. This is important to me because if I ever want to be successful, you have to try hard and not give up. Even if something gets in my way, I will walk away and still walk forward. Thank you. If you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, keep moving forward. A simple question I would ask others is, do you want to be successful? Mia, motivational Mia with all the gems. I love it so much. Always walk forward. Um, thank you. Brandon, what are you what are you thinking? I'm thinking Mia has a future in motivational speaking. <laughs> that's, what that's what I'm thinking. Thank you for the positive enforcement and just really seeing it in the photo, right? And seeing the, that green tree standing tall. Um, I love I like that. It's, this is surreal too, in a different way, because right they're like this is like the fall, right? Because the plants, uh, the trees on the side, they're like orange, they turn in colors, but the but the butterflies are still there. <laughs> you know, what I mean? and the butterflies are vibrant and glowing, and um, you have you centered uh, the the tree in the middle, and you spoke to that, just like persevering and moving forward, and it's the tallest tree out there, so it's very symbolic of what you're what you're saying. And I can see, I can see that. I can see you um, selecting that image very carefully and creating this scene to um, complement your language and complement your positive uh, aura, right? And the energy that you bring into it. So thank you for sharing your light with us. Um, always move forward. Yeah. I think that's what I wanted to say as far as do I want to be successful? Yeah, I want to be successful. You know, yes. Uh, for family, for just like, you know, for personal, like I, I, I really want to make something out of this life in this lifetime, you know. And I think it's great to be asked that question because it's like a wake up, you know. Yeah, do you, do you want this or not? It's all else I hear it. <laughs> but thank you, Mia. This is great. Yeah, great job. Give it up for Mia. All right, y'all. Next up, we invite Akudo to take the stage. Okay. Um, all right. Hello, my name is Akudo Yuraza. I'm 16 years old and I'm in 10th grade. And I attend South Shore International. My simple good is being determined no matter the situation you're in because it can go a long way. For example, I played a game I thought was super hard. I kept having to restart the level because I kept dying. But I always got but I always got through it and I never gave up. Which led me to be able to when I was done, I felt proud that I that I tried hard and was able to finish the game. And that was all because of my determination. My simple girl was inspired by all of my bad outcomes when I didn't try my best. And I wish that I could go back, but now I have to focus on what's next. I depicted my simple good in my photo by showing the picture of me, and the text above is what I'm thinking on the inside. So whatever it takes is implying that I will continue into it. Some struggles as an artist that I can overcome using my simple good 
is when taking a picture and you aren't getting any good shots, they don't know if you even will. But you continue to try and you end up getting a great shot before you're taking the picture. It ends up being a total su success. I plan on using my, my meaning of the simple good to improve my community and change the world by inspiring others to never give up and to work hard because it can go a long way. It may not always work at times, but that's just a building process. If you continue, your hard work will pay off and you, and you will want to continue in that way. This is important to me because I never, so I never want to see anyone struggling and giving up, especially during important things, such as a competition or even schoolwork. I want to see others succeed. Thank you. A simple good question I would like to ask others is, how do you stay optimistic in difficult situations? Amazing, Akudo. My eight-year-old son heard you practicing, and now he's using it as a reason to say he needs to play more video games. So thank you, Akudo. Great job. Brandon, what do you think? How do you stay optimistic in difficult situations? Yeah, I think that's a, um, that's a great question. Uh, and I was thinking about it a little bit, you know, as you were, as you were talking about um, staying optimistic and you're talking about your work, whatever it takes. Um, I think for me, it's just, I stay optimistic by remembering my experience in life is up to me. Like, you know, what I get to experience really is dependent on what I'm committed to creating for myself, what environment I'm really to create for myself and how I how I utilize my intellect and my intelligence to create that environment or create that uh, reason to be fulfilled. Um, feeling pessimistic doesn't feel good, right? Um, and it also can put a strain, well, it also can impact the people around you. You know, I would say, and I care also care about the people around me, like my community and these, these other things, because I know there are a lot of folks watching. I know his family, um, they may be dealing with their own things. So, you know, I try to, I try to create a good environment and speak from a good energy and come from a good place, you know, because I think it's, it's really important. So that's how I see, I can talk about this for like a, you know, a long time, because I think it is a practice and it's a, a life, something that you practice throughout life and changes in different times. It's not like changes, things happen. Um, and what's, what's here today may not necessarily be here tomorrow in the same way. Um, I think I, I really like your sentiment and what you, the message that you are carrying. That is what is most impactful to me around what you, you shared and and also your work, um, just like willingness to do the thing and be good at the thing and uh, succeed. And that's what I get from, from your piece is like your commitment to being successful and your commitment to doing what it takes. So I want to thank you for, for sharing that. Um, and also sharing this question to have us really think about it. I mean, all of us are going to have different answers to how do we stay optimistic. And some folks may need insight on how to do that in the situations they're in in our life. So your question opens up ability for people to uh, share and also for people to get gems that, that they may be able to use as they're moving forward in their life. So, yeah, thanks. Thank you. Great the job. Concept I have a one question though, one question. The constellation, what does a constellation in the bottom left mean? Oh, um, that was just to like, um, that was to add to like the, like the filter, like, because I mean, I try to make it all blue. Mm -hmm. added, yeah, that, that was to add it to so. Okay, thank you. Great job, give it up to Akuto, y'all. Thank you, thank you. All right, Naomi. Hello, my name is Naomi Reese. I am 14 years old in 10th grade and attend Baker College Prep. My simple good is the orange in the picture that represents happiness because it is a bright color and it also combines with the sunset. My simple good was inspired by the beauty of nature and how common nature can be. I depicted my simple good because I will always talk to my friend that recently passed away about me wanting to take a beautiful picture of the sky because he took one and I want to experience it for myself. But I never caught one until now. 
I plan on using my meaning of the simple good to improve my community and change the world by persuading people and letting them know that nature can be more than just nature. You can have different meanings and understand what you make it about. This is important to me because I actually taught myself throughout the program how to deeply detail a, a simple picture. I just, I just looked at pictures and couldn't tell anything about them until I got into this program. Thank you. A simple good question I would ask of this is, have you noticed anything that changed the bachelor since you've been in this program? Thank you, Naomi. Thank you. Thank you for sharing all of this with us. Um, for those of you in the chat, maybe you could talk about, have you noticed anything that has changed about you since you've been a part of this, right? Since we've been having this conversation and these students have been sharing uh, their simple goods with you. Brandon, go ahead. Uh, this is great. And what you spoke to is really great too. I think it illustrates how, you know, how we get to see and experience life is, is very much determined through the lens in which we can receive uh, life, right? And to the lens in which we are, allow ourselves um, to be able to receive. And a lot of times when you, um, when you don't open yourself up to see the beauty in things, you can't, right? And it's not easy to know when, exactly when, or at different points where you might not be open to see the beauty in, in the thing or beauty in the world around you. But when a friend or someone comes in your life and helps you expand how you see the world, that's really impactful, right? That's really deep meaning. I think that's what we do as, as artists, as creatives, is that we give people opportunities to see maybe a little bit more and see maybe a little bit differently. So um, thank you for so much you expressed. I mean, I think you you almost said a testimonial about the program there, like, and how is uh, how it's impacting people, right? And how it has to be the, the potential of really contributing to people's life in a major way, so much so that it can impact how they see the world and it, it can impact how they're experiencing and what they see when they look at a painting, right? That's a monumental shift in somebody's consciousness and, and awareness. So thank you. You have a beautiful use of color. I, you have a really great way of, of seeing color and I could see that just from looking at this image. Um, so, you know, I, I don't know much about your work be, beyond this, but the strengths that you begin to discover through your practice, lean into them and, you, and develop them. You don't know where it, it could potentially take you, but there's something great about your perspective and there's something great about how you're receiving these colors and how you presented them here. You know, this feels like in, in many ways, how I see the sunsets when I see them, just rich with color, even in these dark, where these dark silhouettes are in front, right? You see these dark buildings. I love that. I love how you see the dark buildings that, that lit from this, you know? So yeah, you know, I really, I'm excited for you and um, I, everyone, I'm excited for, for all of the artists like in this room. And I really relate to the colors here. It's similar to, I think the colors that, I, th I believe it was Muhammad Shear. He had the sky and I talked about the, the purple and the orange too. Um, so yeah, excellent use of color, excellent use of framing too. And um, yeah, I'm excited for you. Thank you. Great job, Naomi. Give it up for Naomi, y'all. Thank you. And last but certainly not least, we invite Princess Alexander. Oh. You there, Princess? Princess, I'm looking through. Princess was here with us earlier. But it looks like we might have lost her. Um, I can pull up her statement and read it out loud so we can hear the explanation of her work, but let's take a moment to take it in. All right, Princess writes, Hi, my name is Princess Nandi Alexander. I'm 16 years old in 11th grade and attend the Noble Academy. My simple good is simply giving to others. I feel like that this is the best way to gain joy for yourself by uplifting another. I give because knowing that another is getting benefit by what I do makes me feel like a good person. 
My simple good was inspired by the way I see my mom and dad treating people they meet. I notice that they always find ways to give to another person, even if it's even if it's either conversationally, physically, or emotionally. I notice how the receiver feels when they receive this and the joy my parents get from it and thought, I'd love to do that for another person. I depicted my simple good in my photo by showing how nature looks when it is being treated right. Specifically in my example, I show how cultivated the land looked for, that a friend and I grew from just giving to the earth, not exploiting the soil by just stripping it of its natural minerals or over fertilizing it for more crops. Some struggles as an artist that I can overcome using my simple good is as I give back to the soil, I will generate more cultivation for me. It rewards us for showing it love. And yes, for most, it is a struggle to grow healthy fruits and vegetables if they are constantly taking from what they're growing out of. I plan to change the world through the simple good of just giving by generating healthier food for us to eat and overly just help us live longer. This is important to me because for obvious reasons, I'd say for most, we wanna live long lives long, healthy lives. Most of our health comes from the food we eat, and if that food is giving us what we need, we're on the right track. A simple good question I would ask others is, what is something you love that helps you feel good about yourself? That's a really powerful question. So what do y'all think? Uh, what is something you love that helps you feel good about yourself? And then Brandon, if you wanna go ahead and answer that question. Yeah. This is great. Um, I love the thought that she she put into it. I think she speaks on some really good things. Uh, I'm a, like a firm believer believer in you know you are of course you are what you eat. You hear that a lot, right? But you know like the state of the food you're in too um, is really important. Um, quality of the food that we end up eating is very important. And I think being someone who is um, committed to good quality food is a great thing, and you can make a really good career for yourself out of it because people do care about that right and we need people working on those problems to kind of solve how do we get fresh food in certain areas how do we do you know these things and how and how do we make it plentiful right so yeah I think this is um this is great she spoke on a lot of things um, cultivating the land contributing to other people the things that her parents taught her a lot um like foundational um really rich principles and rich things um so yeah I, to answer the question um i think i think something that i love is just is uh is is food and like creating like really being um true to myself with how i with how i eat in my diet and keeping my diet relatively simple but not just eating things because they feel good in the moment or because they like, you know, cause a lot of those things, like a lot of these sugars aren't good for us long-term. So the way that I eat is, is strict, but I feel good. Like I like feel in my body, you know what I mean? I feel good. Like I feel, I have a lot of energy. Um, I feel, you know, I don't feel bloated when I, like when you eat certain things, I, I generally feel pretty good and it's because of this simple diet. And I think a lot of times we think a lot of choices is what gives us a better experience or better quality of life. It's not necessarily the case. I mean, it's doing what works for you. And a lot of times that's being really simple about what you're, what you're putting into yourself. Also being really straightforward and clear about the things that you want to accept into your life and into your space and then clear about the things you don't want to accept in your life, right? it leaves you in a position of like, I feel good about this life I'm leading. I feel good about this road I'm traveling. So that's how I, I would answer that. Um, yeah, I love it. I love the, like I said, I love the sentiment that this is this is bringing. I think that was something else I wanted to say. I might've said it, but it, I just got, a lot of things came up um, when after hearing Princess speak, I'm hearing Princess's words through Ollie's uh, re reciting her, her statement. But I love it. I mean, it's it's yeah, and I'm I'm in there. Thank you. Thanks for having me too. Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you. And thank you to all of the students um and everyone for being here um and getting to hear all of the simple goods. We'll do a quick time check, knowing that the time is now 12:30, but we just have a few more words that we'd like to share with y'all if you can stay on. And I'm gonna go ahead and pass the mic back to Priya. 
Um, thank you, Ali, and thank you, everybody. You guys are all really amazing. Um, we have been doing this program for 10 years now, and I think that this is one of the most profound showcases that we've had, and it's all a testament to your guys' ideas, artworks, and thoughts. So appreciate y'all for bringing what you did here today and bringing so much intention. Um, I think it has really helped transform and inspired everyone that's been a part of this today's showcase. So with that being said, I am very, very excited and proud to announce that over the course of this period of time, we have some um, amazing, what it takes to do this takes a lot of courage, right? And for us, to take the courage to create is what we try to really empower through the simple good. So I'm very excited to announce that you guys are our newest TSG Youth Ambassadors. And so what that means is that you've officially been equipped with understanding and spreading positivity through the Simple Good program. So now you're accountable and responsible to continue to spread the simple good around the world. So we will talk about a little bit more what that'll look like. Um, at our next session together. But I know there are some ambassadors in this group already. And so I hopefully you've been exposed to what our ambassadors lead with and bring to the table. And I'm so excited to have you guys a part of the Simple Good family and for more to come. So um, with that being said, I wanted to hand it to Brandon to say a few final words. Uh, thank you. Thanks so much for uh, inviting me here today to engage with the things that you have been creating over the length of this program. Um, thank you for the work that you've been putting in and also the work that you're doing for yourself and uh, how uh, that may be impacting the people in your space, in your family, you know, um, really reaching inward and, and pulling this work out uh, and showcasing this work impacts our family and the people around us in great ways. And sometimes we don't realize that to later, later in life until they, they may say something to us. So I want to thank you for that. Uh, I am, I also wanted to talk to you all about, I'm, I'm doing a program with the organization on the South side where we're selecting artists uh, work or artist pieces um, for uh, these fences, these fence pieces that we're putting up throughout the South side. So like showcasing artists work in the community as a way to beautify the community and add to the community, similar to what you would see when a mural goes up. But these will be like, they will be smaller pieces, maybe three, three foot by four foot or something like that. And they're gonna go on these fences. Um, so I, I would ask the program, you all are gonna be out of the program in a while, but if you're interested in having your work, you, you know, you correspond with in the program and let them know, um, I will, we would love to have you and there is a stipend involved and this should be pretty cool. So I wanted to make sure I let y'all know that uh, Ali asked me to do a video. I might do another video at a certain time to send to y'all um, specifics maybe, but that's pretty much the pitch. And if you all are, are down with it and like the idea, want to get your work out there, you know, let us know. Thank you. Thank you, Brandon. Um, and yes, we'll be sending more information about that opportunity um, and it, submitting your photos for potential being potentially being selected for that. So please do um, show your interest if you're interested in being a part of it. And thank you for the opportunity, Brandon. So before we take off, just wanted to make a few final thank announcements. You. Um, we do uh, do remind everybody here to check out our Simple Good merchandise. Every year we pick five students across all the neighborhoods uh, that we support and select their Simple Goods to be featured on our Simple Good Pote Tees that help our soul to help support our TSG youth program. So um, as you can see, we've had students including our very own Joelle that's here today, who Simple Good got featured on a quote. And um, it allows us to spread your message even further all around the world for those that buy it. So you guys can check out the shop at shop.thesimplegood.org and we'll be making announcements about whose quotes got selected later this year. So please be sure to check it out and help spread the word so that um, your family and community members can support the Simple Good. Well, that is all for us today. We are so happy and proud that for everything that you guys have brought us, congratulations on being our newest ambassadors. Tell your family, tell your friends, you guys should be so proud of how you're helping spread the simple good and positivity here in Chicago. And thank you all for being here today. We'll see you soon.
Great job. Good Students, job. go ahead, move back into the Google Classroom. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Stay safe, stay creative.